common. Inshallah, what we have from our SMC people from the talks and we've, we've talked a bit for the last couple of weeks. Let's hear if we have any questions from the talks. That way we get an understanding, are people understanding the talks? When we talk we don't understand it. So we need to get the feedback from people, did they understand it? If they didn't understand it then we we'll go deeper into it inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, can you please expand on the understanding of when Allah said He was going to create a Khalifa? Is this the qalb of Sayyidina Muhammad? I'm going to create someone who represents me. This is an ancient reality of the reality of Muhammad and Rasulullah. That Allah a hidden treasure wanting to be known and Allah being known, these are now the ways of marifa, not the way of the physical, wanting to be known so then cannot have a partner. So knowledge of God can't be direct because people then would think, oh I can be physically in God's presence and we can share a breath together or share an energy together. That's not the azimat of Allah this is not the owner. Allah must create a creation to represent Him and must be the most beatific and most honoured. As a result Allah praises that reality that, you are khuluqul azeem. Allah created that reality, of course He's going to name it as the, you are the most magnificent character, Adheem. From Allah is, is giving that praise because this reality He created is the best of realities. He only created it to be known and only through that reality He would speak through creation. And as a result that creation, its power is hammed. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we, we call Liwal Hamd. Surah Fatiha is the flag of praise. It is Sayyidina Muhammad The Qur'an is a dress in reality and haqqaiq of Sayyidina Muhammad emanating from the Muhammadan heart. So means from the center of that aqfa is a sound. Now imagine all the created universe or just one understanding that from the aqfa center is a sound. That sound creates an energy. That energy creates little lights. These lights become atoms and molecules. They begin to bond with each other to make forms. But it all started at the center.
Allah knows how He's going to create this creation and how He's going to manifest. But you can't have partner with Allah so it can't be manifesting from Allah going back to Allah So becomes the reality and the soul of Muhammadun Rasulullah And Allah sends a sound and an energy into that heart and that reality begins to hamd, makes a sound, a hamd. Why? Because that hum begins to come out, its vibrations, its sounds come out, lights begin to appear from sound. This is a science. They know that every, every light has coming from a sound, from a praise they call string theory. As a result these lights are appearing, not only when light is appearing but they're finding that they're actually atoms. So when they studied the atom they saw all lights bosoms and all these different energies that come together and they make forms. That means the immensity and the immensity of Prophet and Allah created that reality and made it the flag of praise and muham. He gave all, this, all the symbols in the name, the most praised one. Why is most praised? Because he's created to manifest. And what Allah describes in Surah Al Ishara, wa rafahna laka dhikrak, wa rafahna laka dhikrak. This not for our little dirty earth, this is for all created creation. Have we not raised your dhikr? Because it's the hamd of Prophet is the sound throughout the created universe. And all created angels that, that take from that sound and begin to mimic a praise, it's all salawat and durood al sharif. Because durood the sharif and salawat is the dhikr of Allah Because every salawat is, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa sallim All the different salawats but it's a praise of Allah And Allah described, this is my dhikr, means is immense. So when we sit and we want to regain our status in the heavens and regain our power, our connection, our rizq, our health is make durood sharif because we don't understand who the reality of that soul is. What Allah gave of honour and grace, how Allah wanted to be known by His reality because the petty people of this earth they only think with physicality. If we're understood through our spirituality and the realities of light, imagine then the power of Madinah to Munawwara. But 90% of the people they spend all their time in Mecca, they got it wrong. The boss is in Medina to Munawwara, that's their test, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam The Khalifa was created before that. The Khalifa is the creation of Adam to carry the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah Shaitan thought he had that position to represent Allah because that reality of Prophet had not yet manifested in the realm of these creatures, that this reality of Prophet was behind the parda and I was a Rasul before Adam was between clay and water. So whom all the heavens think they're talking to is Allah but it's Muhammadun Rasulullah Not an angel, not a jinn, not anything understood that reality. 
they understood they have a had, they have a limit in which to approach. That's when the Miraj and Sayyidina Jibreel said, I cannot approach, I'm non-existent at that level. From that non-existent level Muhammadun Rasulullah has anciently been addressing creation because creation wasn't in existence without the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah There was not an angel, there was not a Bayt al-Mahmud, there was nothing without the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah As soon as the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah comes into existence he is the Rasul and re- represents Allah and was the one speaking to all creation. And we described that in Nisf shaban one whom was taught with power because who taught the names to Sayyidina Adam salam? When Prophet described, I was a Rasul, alama isma kullaha, who alama, who taught the names to Sayyidina Adam? all the names, Prophet taught. Who's going to teach? A Prophet is describing, I was a Rasul while he was then brought down in rank and all the taught. But Prophet taught all the names. As a result of those knowledges and those realities that was the Khalifa that would represent Muhammadun Rasulullah when I created a Khalifa Allah is describing, I created a representative of Sayyidina Muhammad and they're under the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad So this is a completely much deeper understanding the Prophet behind the veil. As a result of the astonishing uloom and the lights and these are in the haqqaiqs that, that they have written about the tabari and the birth of creation. That when Sayyidina Adam salam was brought into existence, the lights that were emanating from his reality, the angels were making sujood because they had known that light as Divinely Presence. And this was their openings towards marifah. And everywhere Sayyidina Adam was going, they were making and bowing because of these lights and these realities that were coming. And Sayyidina Adam was so fascinated by it that he wanted to see the lights and these blessings. So it means there's many, many different stories of the realities in which Allah dressed upon Sayyidina Adam And as a result of these knowledges the angels were ordered to go into sujood and prostrate for the ihtiram and the respect of this light now entering in. So the Khalifa is actually for Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet Rasulat was ancient that I'm created to be a messenger for Allah And this is the haqqaiq and the reality of Prophet and all the Prophets were created to represent Prophet and that's why Allah says, if He comes in your time you swear your allegiance, وَقَالُوا بَلَى That all Prophets were told that if at any time Sayyidina Muhammad is to appear that you are to follow Prophet and that's why for the Miraj Sayyidina Muhammad went and they all prayed behind. Because there's only one Rasulullah representing Allah All of the other Prophets are just agencies and agents for that reality. And they are under the kingship and the authority of Muhammadun Rasulullah No one has access to La ilaha illallah. And that's why all the other stories we teach, Sayyidina Musa thought he's talking and said, no found out that he's talking to Prophet and these are all the qasas of the stories of the Prophets and their marifah to find their who they are under the authority of, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. So 
Is the Holy Quran the entire manifest worlds, plural? The Holy Quran is what? The entire manifest worlds. What does that mean? Is it applicable to the entire created creation? Yes, it's a power. We're trying to describe that Allah's speech is not created. It's a power that moves the universe and continuously flowing. So Allah speech, Manzur Qur'an, the house of Qur'an is this qalb, the center power of the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the Qur'an is the kitab of all kitabs because it's the heart of all hearts, everything emanates from that heart. And above the Qur'an is Ummul Kitab, so Qur'an has a qaf and a noon with a light. Ummul Kitab has alif and mim, means this is in a realm that Allah gives to Muhammadun Rasulullah So, more power, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is this description of the annihilation like an analogy with the death process? What description of annihilation? What we just talked about, is it like the death process? Yeah, we have all the other talks on annihilation, that's why we have to die. And the tariqah is based on mawt qabl and mawt, face your death, start working for your death now. And this was the holy companions, same Prophet was teaching to them, mawt qabl and mawt, die before you die. Don't run from death, you know, I don't want to die, I don't want to even talk about it, I don't want to get life insurance, I don't want to do any of these things, what, what, what's wrong with you? There's our other nation that they want to live a thousand years on this earth. We are a nation that waiting to go back to Prophet and we plan for it every day, how are we going to go back? Make sure everything is good, our account is good, make sure we did everything that Allah is content with. Only time you want more time on this earth. If you've done something wrong and you need to correct your file, otherwise our life is a continuous step towards our death. And in your spiritual practices if you can uh, achieve that, Allah give you to die before you die so that your soul's power comes out before you enter the grave. Your accounting is coming out before you enter the grave. And as a result you hear with Allah's hearing, you see with Allah's seeing and everyone to their levels of what Allah wants to give inshaAllah. The whole system is based on that. As soon as we look around the earth is based on that. Look at the concept of soil, you throw a seed in the soil and what happens? It annihilates the seed so that a flower or plant or tree can come out. We were all supposed to annihilate, we were all supposed to make seclusion and seclude ourselves and try to build ourselves so that we're not just a seed because seeds they just throw at each other and it hurts. Very few people become a tree with fruits that others can benefit, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Yesterday you had mentioned a new book coming out, uh, Powers mm -hmm. of the Heart, when will this be available? InshaAllah soon, soon within the next uh, few weeks once we're proofing it and all the proofing is done then it'll be available and I'm sure you'll hear about it right away. All over social media, emails, everything it'll be pushed out inshaAllah soon. It's about the six powers of the heart and opening the powers of the heart I think very timely for for difficult days and uh, again it's, it's one of a series of books. So you have to meditate, understand how to meditate, understand what is power, qudra, energy, how to bring the energy 
understand the realities of Hajj which is actually the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah And uh, like what we said, the scientists were, were giving a, a big talk in Cambridge and so, oh I think we've unlocked the secrets of the flower of life. And we were looking at it in a linear but then no it's actually circular, I don't know what they're talking about. Oh <laughs> understood, they're trying to understand the universe and its key is Muhammadun Rasulullah I mean you can learn through your aqal and mind but what is it going to do for you? You can't lift the flower and a plant up but the one who can enter into that ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah yeah, they can tap into an energy force that is a force for all of creation. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Say, when did the permission to use Haqiqatul Tai stop? I don't know, they didn't give me the date. So we <laughs> We don't, we don't have that level of authority that's way, way above our pay. So our, our understanding from Mawlana Shaykh's teachings always was that uh, when the advent of Dajjal became very apparent that his time is actually now I would imagine in 1973 during Shaykh uh, Sultanul Awliya and Shaykh Abdul Faizid Daghestani many stories of Haqiqat al Tai in which his shaykh would sit him down and say, I want you to take this medicine to that person and then he would say, okay Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and he would appear and move and then tell the person that, please eat this meat, this will take away your sickness. And awliya were moving to where their shaykhs were telling them or where there was a need and order by Prophet They didn't take sky trains, they didn't take airplanes, they did nothing. They just Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and they were exactly where they were supposed to be. And these were the times in which they would give a khutbah talk and they would vanish from the minbar because they would enter into a hall or they would sit in the zikr and you'd look and they're gone. But I would imagine then about the time of 1973 when Sayyidina Mahdi Salam's physicality was born then the game changed. And the advent of technologies and cell phones and uh, the disruption if people started to film and take pictures of people. And there are even talks of Mawlana Shaykh going on Hajj and being a, in a group of people, the people coming back and say, oh, we saw you on Hajj, we were doing tawaf with you. And then he, he smiled and tried to not talk about it. but. With the advent of technologies and the advent of the arrival of Dajjal and not to confuse people with Dajjali things that would be happening. And now is the time for Dajjal and he will be doing the miracles with the permission of Allah And this is a great test upon people, a great difficulty upon people. And that's why we said then for us is always a reminder. That you know your key and our key is Muhammadun Rasulullah If people say, why you have to you know you teach too much about that, it is our key, that's the only thing we're supposed to teach about. If we don't it will be forgotten and people will be in immense difficulty. So that they, they, this is the key for our salvation, the key for our connection, for our energy and to reach Allah's qudra and power. InshaAllah. So these are important realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi you were saying uh, the shaykh AI is in a learning phase. So does that mean AI can learn from our bad manners the way some of the angels learned from shaitan's character? No, this is like a philosophy. The, shay the AI how it's programmed is to learn. So most definitely if somebody's using AI for nefarious and very bad reasons, yeah of course that's where it was taught to be a student of negativity and searching and going after people and then trying to do nefarious things. They have AIs that are hacking now and trying to break accounts and break codes and sure. So it is a, a knowledge base. 
depending upon how you want to use that knowledge and that technology. Somebody had question on the AI that if the shaykh's against technology why do you have an AI? <laughs> so that's a, not anything that we've talked about that of course we have to use the technology. What are we going to talk to you from a horse in a buggy and then send everybody a, a, a letter in the mail that we have zikr next Thursday. So whatever shaitan is using for nefarious reasons of course we're going to use his technologies to reach people and to bring them back towards Allah up to a certain point and if the game is over the game is over. But Allah gives a responsibility and say, how are you going to use it? So we say if 90% of the people want to use it for, for very bad and for very bad reasons then that responsibility is upon them and judgment comes to them. But if you take these, these things that Allah is re releasing upon the earth and shaitan is trying to, to destroy people with but use them for Allah then this is the important. So this what we do to reach them so that they could ask a nice question from AI. But what do you do with technology is then a whole nother different uh, ball game. Are you trying to make AI and to bring people towards Islam or are you trying to teach people? So the average person, no they're not, they're using technology just to enjoy and entertain themselves. That's why we're asking people to serve, do khidmat. If you have a mobile phone you take the finger that Allah gave to you or thumb if your finger doesn't work and start sharing, share, share articles, share articles. Go to the charity site and share the wells so that people will come to the wells, go to the store and share the, the SMC items. Who's going to get SMC items? The Malaysian government or SMC students? So this is a, this is a family, if we want to be like a family we have to act like a family. So family sticks together and make a circle to perfect and to protect ourselves from shaitan. And that's why everything is being done. People come and say, why do, why, why you have all these SMC items? I say, so that we have a familiarity so that people understand this is our sign, this is our flag and that we're a community and uh, we mashaAllah have a very strong community. We don't have to melt in with other people, we want to show that we are our own community. And this is how active our community is. And that's why I say when you want to give the food put the shirt on. You know this is a part of other people seeing that these guys are organized. This inspires what? Jealous people to maybe get up and to do something themselves and other people to join because everybody now needs to feel they're part of a tasbih. Just being a bead on your own is probably a very scary time to be sitting all alone on your couch, see all this crazy news of all oh, death, destruction, sickness, coughing, this guy's blowing his nose, everyone's going to die tomorrow. And then all by yourself you're going to think, what should I do? I don't know, I'm going to make istikhara and that's it, they have no choice, no understanding. Go to maybe a local person, crazy, more crazier than you, you don't know what he's going to say and what kind of advice he's going to give, maybe he's angry at his family that day. But you come to a community, you know people don't understand until they enter the community and say, no these people are very loving, they're very kind. Three days a week they do their khidmat and they teach, they're building tools so that their teaching can go 24 hours a day. I mean I can't answer emails that fast but now we have 24 hours a day people are asking questions on that. That's a khidmat from us to the people, to the students, to the family of, of SMC people. At least they can return that love by showing and expressing their love, supporting the love, supporting the way, supporting the group, to, to be with pride and to wear it with pride, to share the images with pride. And that's what keeps you know in the old times when they were being attacked by Indians they start to circle. And when we circle together and make ourselves strong the community becomes stronger, more activities. And mashaAllah I think where we, where the, the proof is in the pudding, lots of activities, lots of uh, media all over, the, all over the place. We have everybody making AI now, all of our, our, our people are <laughs> making AI images. So this is great, what could be better than that? Now you have the internet being flooded with the Naqshbandi anime. 
Yeah, SubhanAllah is beautiful. You know, we were talking before, oh let's make some animes, like to me it was like uh, something so far from our thought on how we're gonna do it. Maybe we'll find some Korean company, we'll hire them. Now mashaAllah we have on a daily basis maybe 20, 30 different people posting Naqshbandi anime, all in sunnahs, very majestic. Put the SMC logo, don't put it without it because they will steal your images. And then all in sunnah giving the advices and the teachings and you see you watch it inevitable that somebody's going to make you know spiritual anime based on these understandings. They'll see it and it'll be inspired within the hearts of many people to start to do that. So that the sunnah is something proud and that we understand this is the armour and the spiritual protection for the believer, not a suit, not a tie. Not a karavat and not a Colonel Sander tie and none this is not our culture, this is not our protection. Our protection is the way of Sayyidina Muhammad and to be proud of it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Do our seven names relate with the manifestation of us in different dimensions? Definitely you have seven paradises <clears throat> and each of those paradises has your reality and it has a name and a significance. So we describe that in other talks, seven names. So you have a name in a paradise that has to do with praise and in that paradise <clears throat> what Allah dressed your reality with on how He wants you to praise Him and praise Sayyidina Muhammad your salawat and durood, how to worship. All, all of these realities were given to that because only your physical reality on this dunya has an ego. The other ones are perfected realities with immense power, they don't have egos. So they are perfected in the way and the worshipness that Allah wants for you. And as a result of the one who knows himself what happens? He should be making an ascension towards these realities. So when he conquers his bad character, cleans the heart, brings the love of the shaykh and all the things that have been taught to us and then make the connection to Prophet and what happens? They begin to ascend in their ascension. As they're ascending each of those paradises are inspiring that make your durood, make your love uh, on the salawats and increase your love for Sayyidina Muhammad and inspiring them in their worshipness. Then another paradise one is inspiring on how to struggle, struggle against bad character, fight the bad. They begin to lend their madad to the physical. Because they all want the physical one to be lifted up. So they want nothing more than our physicality, the one who ended up on the earth to be lifted up back into the heavens. But they can't understand that until they know themselves and then they'll know their Rabb, their authorities. First the Rabb is the one who's making you do very bad things, you have to beat him, take him down. And then the Rabb that in the authority that wants to uplift us towards uh, spirituality and, and the Divinely Lights, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. What is the nature of existence in Ummul Kitab? Is Nabi Ahmad the authority of this reality? Hmm? <laughs> mm. Yeah. Sayyidina Muhammad and Nabi Ahmad immense reality. This is a, in the world of light 
and the authority of the world of light. And all of them are related to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And what coming out from Umm Kitab has to do with the depth in which we try to achieve the inner reality of the heart of Prophet So this is to a journey to the Lord of power, means that the, the one whom wants to reach deep into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So that why? So that that reality dresses them with more and more of that energy, that electricity that we're trying to describe. It's not electricity but for words and a lack of better words for people to visualize. We're trying to reach to that fire and to the presence of that energy and that qudra. And the more the deeper you can reach inside that fire, the more these knowledges and these realities. And Sayyidina Ahmad has to do with the, the realities of ahadiyya and samadiyya attributes of Allah the dressing that reality. So these are very, very high and as a result the Ummul Kitab then is a, is a is a knowledge and realities that uh, is above the realities of what we understood of Qur'an and what manifests out of Qur'an, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat khamni yasifun wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.